Dr. Sage here. Today we're going to begin discussing the prokaryotes. That would be the bacteria and the archaea. In particular, in today's video, we're going to do an overview about bacteria. By the end of this video, you should be able to list the structures all bacteria possess, identify structures that some but not all bacteria possess, describe the three major shapes of bacteria, describe the more unusual shapes of bacteria, and provide terms to describe the bacterial arrangements. Prokaryotes are single-celled or unicellular. Only eukaryotes can be multicellular. So for example, you are a eukaryote, you are built out of trillions of cells. In contrast, a prokaryote like a bacteria, one bacteria is only one cell big. Now, not all eukaryotes are multicellular. For example, there are yeast and protists, which are eukaryotic cells that can be unicellular. But prokaryotes are always unicellular. Even though they're unicellular, prokaryotes may stick together to form associations and biofilms. We often think about this in terms of the plaque buildup on our teeth or the biofilms that accumulate on implanted medical devices inside humans. For example, this is from an implanted medical device. And you can see in this figure here, these are Staphylococcus aureus bacteria. And surrounding them, all this stuff you see here, is a stick of material that they secrete. In other words, they make it and secrete it, and that creates that biofilm. Helps them to adhere to the device they're on in this case. Now, in regards to cell size, prokaryotic cell size varies tremendously, but prokaryotic cells are generally much smaller than eukaryotic cells. Most prokaryotes are less than one micrometer in diameter. Now, whereas eukaryotic cells contain their DNA, their chromosomes within the nucleus, which is a membrane-bound organelle inside the cell, bacteria and archaea have nuclear material that's free in the cytoplasm. It's not surrounded by a membrane-bound organelle, the nucleus. Instead, it's located in a region of the cell called the nucleoid. And the nucleus that eukaryotic cells have is one example of a membrane-bound organelle. Well, it turns out that bacteria don't have the nucleus, but they also don't have any other membrane-bound organelles. We won't find the Golgi apparatus or the endoplasmic reticulum or any of those membrane-bound organelles inside a bacteria cell. Now, there are some things that all bacteria have. All bacteria have a cytoplasmic or plasma membrane. Okay, that's the phospholipid bilayer that differentiates the boundary of the cell. What is the cell from what's not the cell from what's outside the cell? The bacteria must have a chromosome. It must have DNA to carry its genetic information. Like I said, that's located in a region called the nucleoid. They must have ribosomes because the DNA codes to build proteins and the kind of workbenches where you build the proteins are the ribosomes. So they need ribosomes to be able to build protein. Otherwise, there'd be no point in having DNA if you can't build proteins. And then they have the cytoplasm, which is the fluid-like substance inside the cell. Some bacteria, but not all bacteria, have these additional structures. A cell wall, which we'll talk about a lot. A capsule, which is kind of like a thick, slimy coat. Uh, fimbri, you can see these things that kind of look like hairs. Pilus, flagellum, a plasmid, and an inclusion. Like I said, we'll go into more details about what these things are and what their purpose is in other videos. Prokaryotes fall into three basic shape categories. Cocci, or coccus, which is spherical. For example, this image here, you can see a coccus-shaped cell. There's actually two of them in this image here. So it can be spherical or oval or bean-shaped. Bacillus, or bacilli, which is rod-shaped. Filamentous, or club-shaped, like you can see these rod-shaped bacteria here. And then they can be curved either Vibrio, which is gently curved, or Spirilli, which is spiral shaped, like you can see in this image here. So, some more details. Coccus or cocci are the round ones. Bacillus or bacilli are the rod shaped ones. Vibrio are the curved rods. Coccobacillus, so if you think about that, that's kind of a combination of these two words. Well, it's kind of a combination of these two shapes. It's a short rod. Spirulum, which is spiral shaped, and then spiral sheets, which are long, loose, or helical spiral. Now, there are also some common prokaryotic cell arrangements. You can have a single coccus, a single a spherical cell, a diplobacillus, which is a pair of them, a tetrad, okay, 
uh, which is four of them arranged in a square. So if this helps you to remember, although you're probably too young to remember this, uh, if anyone has ever played Tetris, that video game, the reason it was called Tetris is because all of the shapes you're using were all made out of four squares. Okay, they just came in different arrangements, so they, they were all four of them. This prefix tetra means four. So a tetrad, there's four of those cells. Then we have streptococcus, which is a chain of them like this one. Staphylococcus, which is a cluster of them. Bacillus, which is a single rod. And streptobacillus, which is a chain of rods. So again, you can see the prefix strepto, as in streptococcus, or strepto as in streptobacillus. Those are both referring to chains. Streptococcus, a chain of the coccus. Streptobacillus, a chain of the bacillus. All right, well, that's a very brief introduction to bacteria cells. We're going to go into a lot of details about the different types of bacteria cells, their internal, external structures, how they impact humans, etc., in future video lectures. But until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.